have questions. Questions like, why is it called a building if it's already built? Why is there no egg in eggplant? And do penguins have knees? But some questions are more important than others. This past Easter, we gave a survey to find your most asked questions. Questions like, how do I hear God's voice? How can I deal with difficult people? What does the Bible say about forgiveness and heaven? And what's the answer for all of my stress? Every week, we're gonna answer your most asked questions and discover God's best plan, because you asked for it. So we're getting ready now to go into the second part of this series that we have entitled, You Asked For It. And today we're going to talk about relieving stress. This was the number two issue that was raised in our survey. In fact, this is the second year where this issue has been in the top three of the, of, of the issues that we face. Now, in the midst of this series, we're going to talk about some important topics. Let's look at some of those topics as we go forward. Next week, we're going to talk about forgiveness. Amen and how we need to really uh, express the love we have for God by forgiving people who have offended us. And then we're going to talk about prayer and how we can really have a dynamic uh, and, and results-oriented prayer life, how we can find God's will, how we can know and find God's will. And then lastly, we're going to end with spiritual warfare, how we can attack what has been attacking us and get victory because Jesus gave us authority. And we as Christians have to be willing to use the authority that God has given us over the evil that is taking place around us or may even be taking place to us. So now let's talk about relieving stress. I think we all, when we hear that word stress, we know what it is. We don't need a dictionary definition because the society in which we live is full of stress and stressful situations, whether it is the economy, whether it is the job situation, whether it's your family, whether it's your children, whether it's the bills, whether it is, is politics, whether it is terrorism and bombs exploding and all this other kind of stuff. There are a lot of things happening around us that can cause, have the potential to cause stress on us. But the key for us is that we have to recognize where stress comes from and how we can relieve it. So let's look at this scripture, which I think sums up many of our lives. This is by Job. In the midst of all of his trouble, here's what Job says. My life is speeding by without a hope of, a hope of happiness. And I wonder for how many of you does that sound like the rhythm of your life? That life is just moving by and summer's over and you're looking up, and you're not full of joy, you're not full of contentment, you just feel like you're going through the rhythms of life, time is moving, but yet life seems to be standing still. And if that is you, which I believe it's many of us if we're honest, then this message is specifically targeted to challenge you today. Because I'm not going to teach you how to manage stress. Because God never designed us to manage stress. If you and I are living with stress, we are taking on something that we were not designed to manage. And what ends up happening is that we have mental and physical debilitation, sicknesses, because we're carrying weights that God never intended for us to carry. The metaphor that the Bible uses for us as God's children and in the pastoral set, setting is that we are sheep. A sheep is not capable of bearing a burden. We are not donkeys or camels. We're sheep. We are actually very vulnerable individuals who need the protection of a chief shepherd, who is Jesus. So if you are trying to manage the burdens of life in your own strength and your own ability, you are, in essence, allowing weights to be placed on your back that you are already incapable of bearing. 
And that's why it's important for all of us to take stock of our own lives and to recognize that if we're going to really live the fulfilled life, we have to recognize we are sheep. A sheep will graze with their head down. They are never looking around to see if a wolf is coming. A sheep will just eat and just move around. A sheep will drink from still waters. They don't, they're not looking around to see if there's anything that's going to be a predator. Why? Because they have a shepherd who is standing watch over them. They are completely carefree because they know that there's someone appointed to watch over them. So why do you think your life is in your hands? Why do you live your life like whatever a problem arises, it's for you to handle? This is what Jesus died for. Jesus did not die for us to go through life with all of these burdens and weights and cares on us because it steals all our joy. So let's look at Isaiah 53 because here's, here's what helps us understand it. This is Isaiah talking about Jesus' death. His, he's prophesying. He's foretelling the death of Jesus and what it means to us. And he says, the fact is... It was our pains that he carried. When Jesus was on that cross, the weight of what was on him was not something that he had done wrong or anything that he was going to experience. He carried our pains on the cross. He carried our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us. Now, if that's what Jesus died for, then why in the world would we want to live our lives taking on all the stuff that Jesus died to take away from us? And so Jesus is calling us in this stress-filled culture to come to him, to be humble enough to surrender to him and let him manage our lives. Look at what 1 Peter says. 1 Peter says, God opposes the proud. And may I submit to you today that if you're trying to manage your life on your own, lovingly I want to tell you, you're living in pride. Because you're trying to do something that you were never created to do. You're trying to take the place of God in your life. And at some point, that is going to become so overwhelming to you that you're going to buckle under the pressure. And so the Bible says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the, to the humble. So if I want to tap into grace, it's not going to come because I think I got it all together. I can handle it all. If that's the way I think, I shut off the flow of grace in my life. But when I humble myself and say, God, I cannot make it without you. When I have that kind of attitude, I open myself up to the grace of God. So the advice from the Bible based on this statement is, humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. That power, word power, there's the word dunamis. It's the word we get, uh, that, that's the forerunner of the word we use, dynamite. It is an explosive a power that, that has the ability to just change everything. It is a dynamic power. And God is saying in his word that if you will humble yourselves under this power, here's what's going to happen. At the right time, he will lift you up in honor. And so the advice to all of us, to all of us, is give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Whenever you're being tricked into thinking, does anybody care? Yes, the answer is somebody cares. It's God. God cares for you. And God wants you to know that if you will just surrender the stuff to him, if you in humility say, God, this is too big for me, and so I'm giving it to you, and I'm taking my hands off of it, at that moment, your stress will be relieved. So now I want to have a real moment of honesty with you. And you can turn back to your note sheet now for this next point. So here's the truth. We 
are the source of our stress. In light of all the scripture you just saw, God has said, I've given you a mechanism to handle your stress. I've given you a way that you can get the stress off of you, get the pressure, get the burden, get the pain off of you and onto me. I've told you how to do it. I've shown you the benefits of doing it. So if you are allowing stress in your life, it is not because God has not done his job. It's because we've decided we want to be the master of our own destinies. And that's our problem. So today I want to challenge you to really rethink how you approach your life. I want you to make a decision about how you approach life and what happens to you in life. Because the only reason why we are overstressed and we're full of anxiety and worry is because we feel that there's a lack in our lives. So let me run through some of them that I think will help you. The first is a lack of priority. We invite stress in because we don't have our priorities straight. The priority for our lives should be God, me, family, church, job, et cetera, et cetera. If you're dealing with the Western mindset of prioritizing things in a serial manner. But for many of us, what's first is job and money. And then after that is our hobbies and recreations. And then after that, maybe our family, maybe. But our order is out of control, and because our order is out of control, we invite stress. We lack the priority of understanding, no, this is the order of my life, and I'm not going to let something that's further down on the list dominate the front of my list. So we lack the priority of saying, no, this doesn't fit in my life. The next is a lack of planning. Now, I'm really guilty of this one. Many of you may know I'm in school working on my doctorate, and uh, we have assignments that are due every two to three weeks. And it is just something in me. And I've done this from all of my years in school. Once I understand what I need to do, In my mind, it's already done, (laughs) except I haven't written a word on the paper. And so what will normally happen is I will wait until the day it is due or maybe the night before it's due, and I have a 20-page paper that I need to turn in. And I, and I have, have, in my mind, figured out how the paper is supposed to go, the beginning, the, all the other stuff to the conclusion, but never written a word. And so on that night before it's due, then I sit down, and I'm full of stress trying to knock this paper out because I just got to get it done. And time after time, I tell myself, I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> and you know what happens? I do it again. And it just becomes a cycle. It's because I've, I, there's a lack of planning. Some of us bring stress on ourselves simply because we don't take the time to sit and count the cost. And so we're trying to do everything at the last minute, and it's wearing us out. The next is a lack of praying. The Bible says that we should cast all our worries and cares on God because he cares for us. We, we just read that scripture. And then Paul says in Philippians that we should, we should give thanks to God, and we shouldn't be anxious for anything. But if we're anxious, that simply means we haven't been praying. Because in prayer, we transfer all of our cares to God, all of our anxieties to God, and we receive from him his peace. So if you aren't praying, then you're trying to manage life on your own. And you're actually saying to God, I can do this without your help. And you see how long that'll last. We have a lack of perspective. Many of us have a mindset, we can just do it all. I can handle anything. I can do it all. What do you need? Yes, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And we overcommit ourselves. We say yes to everything and everybody. Because we don't have a perspective that says, no, I can only do this. With the amount of time I have, because we all have the same 24 hours in a day, I must prioritize the use of my time in these areas, and even though these are nice things to do, 
I recognize I can't do it all. And so I have to decline being involved in that. If you're overextending yourself, it's because you have a lack of perspective and you really think you can do everything. None of us, though we may feel like it, is Superman or Superwoman. We are human to the degree that we have something that we're supposed to be managing. And that's what, we, that was, that's what had to take the priority. For others of us, it's a lack of purpose. And by a lack of purpose, I mean we're running after other people. We're seeing what somebody else is doing, and we're saying, how can I do that? We're competing with other people. We're trying to run after what other people are doing. We're trying to keep up with the Joneses. And that's because we don't know what our purpose is. So we're trying to adopt someone else's purpose in our lives. And so, well, if they're doing it, then that's what I'm going to do. And our lives are responding to the actions of others instead of responding to the leading of God. That's a lack of purpose. But then there's a lack of partnering. And that is when we think we can do life on our own. That we don't need other people. If you try to do a two-person job with one person, you may get it done. But you're going to find out that you have stressed yourself out, pushed yourself to your limits, and if it's something physical you're trying to do, you may even have brought physical harm to yourself. We must get rid of this mindset that I can do it by myself. Because honestly, a lack of partnering is, a, is actually an immaturity. You know, little kids, they always try to do stuff. And even when you try to stop them and say, you can't do that, they'll still try to push on and make it happen until they realize they can't do it. That's what many of us are, even though we're full-grown adults. We're still trying to handle things that are meant for multiple people, and we're still trying to do it by ourselves. And that lack of partnering, that lack of getting connected to people, is what causes stress in our lives. That is why we encourage you time and time again, get connected with small groups because it's in that body of people that you have a group of people who will be there with you to help share life with you, to do life together with you. And that makes life a lot more worth living as well as it makes life a lot easier because there are things you may not know how to handle and you need wisdom from other people. Well, if you are connected to other people, then they will be able to speak into your life some things you never thought of. But you can't do life alone. And the last one here is a lack of passion. We don't really know what gets us out of bed in the morning. For many of you, you just get out of bed every day because you got to get that job, you got to get that money. I owe, I owe, it's off to work I go. <laughs> and that's your, that's your driving force. But may I submit to you, that's not enough. If that's all you're getting out of bed for, you've lost your passion. And without a passion, to live your life for a greater purpose, stress will come on you because anything that may affect your money will then affect you. But if you have a real passion for living that transcends money and things, then you won't be concerned when anything comes against them. So I want to give you some real basic points that I believe if you'll adopt them, it's your choice, but I really am trying to make a case for us to change our lifestyle. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we're too busy, we're too stressed out, and the only way the stress is going to stop is if we change our lifestyle. As long as you are trying to run the rat race, you'll always be like a rat. But when you realize life is worth more than just running through it and running from thing to thing to thing, and life is to be savored and enjoyed and live to the fullest with God leading you, then you'll have a true, fulfilled, stress-free life. And I believe that's what we want. But we've been accepting that it's not possible because the way we're currently doing life, it isn't possible. We're inviting stress as opposed to relieving the stress. So I'm not, I don't want you to cope with stress. 
I want you to get stress off of you. So, point number one, choose a different path. Decide today, I've got to make some changes. Look at your appointment book. Look at what uses up your, the, the, amount of, the most of your time. If it's not in alignment with the priorities that you believe God has for your life, then it's time to start crossing some things off of your schedule. Today, decide, I am not living in this rip and run race anymore. I choose to step off of that, that train and I choose to enjoy the life that God has given me. I choose not to wake up tired, go to bed tired. I choose not to live my life ripping and running and missing what life is all about. Let's look what scripture says. Don't be like the people of this world. So immediately right there, if you're approaching life the same way a person who doesn't know God is approaching life, something's wrong. If you're as busy and as stressed out and as frazzled as the people of the world are, and you're a child of God, something's missing. That's why we have to choose a different path. Because if our life looks like the lives of those who don't know God, we have certainly missed, missed something. But here's what the Bible encourages us to do. Let God change the way you think. I want you to make a decision today. I don't have to be as busy. And to parents, let me tell you this. You only get one chance to raise your children. And what they need more than the toys and the gadgets is time. And that's something that they can't get back. You can't wait till they're 25 and 30 and then try to relive the days when they were in their teens or, or younger, trying to relive the, the moments you wish you'd had with them. And as a parent whose children are now moving out of the house and going to college, I'm looking back at those times when I should have been present. And I have to stop and say, I didn't do that well because I went against what was most important. I don't want you to live with regrets. I don't want you to live your life and look up and say, I wish I had spent more time with my kids. I wish I had spent more time with my spouse. I wish I had spent more time with my loved ones. Because listen, at the end of life, I've never known anybody on their sickbed who says, I wish I had spent more time at work. And if we can have another moment of honesty, if you were to die today, before Friday, they'd have somebody doing your job. So why are you giving up your life for something that will replace you as soon as you're gone? But that's what many of us do. We miss vacations. We miss holidays. We miss important events. Because we're trying to keep that job happy, trying to keep that money flowing. Man, I wasn't planning on spending so much time on this point, but I sense we need to hear this. It's time for us to choose a different path. Let God change the way we think and don't miss our moments. So here's what Hebrews tells us. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. You have a race to run. You have a, a target that God has for your life. And if you're ripping and racing and running and using all of your ener energy on things that don't matter, you'll miss out on the race that God puts you on this earth to run. And so God says we have to do an assessment and strip off some stuff. And then be content with running your race. Your family doesn't have to be like the, somebody else's family. Your traditions don't have to be the same as someone else's traditions. You don't have to keep modeling yourself after someone else. Do life with those around you and let God lead you and watch what he does in your life. Point number two. 
Live by purpose. Don't live by the moment. Don't live your life always putting out fires, always responding and reacting to all the issues around you. No! Live by purpose. And that's why we have our growth track here, because in our growth track, we answer that fundamental question for you, which is, what on earth am I here for? And in our growth track, you learn and discover who you are, your personality. You'll learn more about your gifts and the things that God has put inside of you and how you can use what God has put inside of you to actually help you to serve other people. That's what God wants us to do. God wants us to live on purpose by purpose. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says in Psalm 139, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Let that sink in. God has already written out what he wants your life to accomplish. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. God has designed your life. God as the master architect has allowed your life to, to have meaning. He programmed it by the moments and the days so that all the days you have on earth will have meaning and purpose in them. But the only way you'll tap into this is by coming to God's family through, through acceptance of Jesus Christ and then allowing God's spirit to lead you. And when you do that, then you will find that fulfillment that has been eluding you all these years. If you're a Christian, but you're still leading your own life, you'll miss this. But if you're a Christian, and you're allowing God's spirit to lead you. Moment by moment, you'll see him do some just amazing things that make life worth living. Little things that just reaffirm that you're glad that you woke up that day. Little things just to remind you that in the larger scheme of God, you have a role to play. And so David prayed this prayer. And I pray it's one that you'll pray. Teach us to realize the brevity of life. Teach us how brief our time on earth really is. Live every day as if it's your last. And if you knew today were your last, what would you do differently. I know there are a lot of things you'd cut out of your life that day because you'd want to focus on that which is most important. So Lord, teach us to realize the brevity of life, how brief our time on earth will be, so that we may grow in wisdom. I want to learn how to use every day, not for my pleasure, but to bring God glory. And then lastly, make a difference. Live your life making a difference in somebody else's life. Here's what the Bible tells us. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us to do long ago. You're a masterpiece. You're an original. There are things that God has assigned for you to do that nobody else can do. If you are trying to be like somebody else, one of you is irrelevant. Run your race. Live for God. Be unique and let God flow through you so that you can do good for other people. And then here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, be generous. And that's really one of the challenges. We're so stressed out, we can't even be generous with our time. People want to talk to us, but we're too busy. People are crying out. That our children, our family members are crying out for attention, and we're so busy. You can't be generous if you're completely tapped out. And so that means we have to create margin in our lives by looking at our calendar and saying, I'm not going to just program every minute of my life with stuff. 
I'm going to free up some time so I can, I can walk slower. I can ha- linger at the coffee machine and have a positive conversation with someone. Be generous. Give to the poor. Help those who are in need. Get yourself a bank that can't go bankrupt. A bank in heaven, far from bank robbers, safe from embezzlers, a bank you can bank on. So there's a way that we can make investments that transcend this life. He goes on to say, it's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and you'll end up being. So my question to you today is, what are you treasuring? Where is your treasure? If your treasure is your job, that's where you will most want to be, and that's where you will end up being. But let me tell you, your job will not satisfy you. Your job cannot fill the deeper meaning and emptiness in your life. And so two things I want to tell you to treasure, and we're done. They're obvious, but I want to make them explicit. Treasure your relationship with God. Treasure it. And you treasure something by investing in it. So how much time do you spend with God? Is your relationship with God simply kind of a drive-by relationship? I don't think that's really treasuring. Do you carve out specific time and say, God, this is our time and I won't let anybody interrupt this time? Because if you treasure, wherever you put your treasure, that's where your heart's going to be. So if you put your time, your talent, and your effort, and your treasure in God, your heart's going to flow there. But here's the last point, and we're done. Treasure your relationship with people. Because in the end, it's all about people. In the end, nobody wants to die alone. In the end, nobody wants to have a funeral where nobody comes to it. In the end, nobody wants to be forgotten. Well, the only way that will ever happen is if you treasure your relationship with people and you start making relationships. You can't stay to yourself. And then when life happens, you then say, where's everybody? How come nobody's here with for me? No. When you live your life in relationship, they'll know something's wrong even before you tell them. And they'll be there with you, even through life's darkest days. So I don't want you to cope with stress. No. I want you to relieve it by changing the path you're on, by deciding to live by purpose, and by living your life each day to make a difference. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed.